I'm going to show you how I bricked up this old fireplace because we're going to be turning the old living room into two bedrooms. So keep on watching if you want to see how I get on. So just to give you a quick recap for those who are new, recently on this bungalow project, me and my dad removed the chimney, then the chimney breast behind this wall, which is actually in the kitchen, so we could add an extra kitchen unit in there. Then we discovered the original chimney archway because this had all been blocked up with a gas fire. And after bricking it, it'll then get plastered as if nothing was there. And the bricks we're gonna be using are the old bricks from that chimney breast. Obviously we had to chip away the original mortar. So I'm now in the garage and my dad is showing me how to use his cement mixer. I did get a few lessons here, not to stick my hands in in case it caught me, not to stick my shovel in either, and I'm wearing safety gear because it's a contained area. So once it was turned on, I started by adding a bit of water, then I'd use a four to one mixture, four shovels of sharp sand and a shovel full of cement. And I added a capful of plasticizer so it was much smoother to work with. It was so dark in here, I had to use my camera torch just to check the texture to see if it was right. Although my dad was the one who checked that for me while it's turned off. That'll do your brush now. <laughs> so because it's quite dusty here, I had to give it a really good sweep to get rid of any debris. And I also used a thick sheet of polystyrene so it was easier on the knees. But generally it's a good idea to wear protective clothing, gloves, because otherwise it would burn. So I started off with a thick bed of mortar for my first course of bricks. And I will be doing a running bond, so the bricks are stacked like this, and they're keyed in with the rest of the brickwork. And with each brick going down, I made sure I put it in between the bricks too. And this is where I learned the term gobbo, which sounds really disgusting, but my dad would say put plenty of gobbo on the ends, which is right here. Then I'd use a flat straight batten against the bricks and tap it gently from the other side to make sure it was in line. Then I'd lay the same batten on top and tap that down too to make sure it was roughly level and roughly in line with the existing bricks. I was told it didn't have to be exactly accurate to the millimetre but make sure it was as close as I could get it. Don't forget all of this will be covered later. So now for my next course of bricks I'm adding more mortar, attaching it at the sides as well, and then for my running bond, as I mentioned earlier. And I asked about whether the bottom course where the bricks join needed to be dead center of the brick above. And apparently it didn't matter, as long as it was enough for it to be structurally sound. So my second course was done. I'm using the batten method again, tapping from behind. Then place the batten on top to check if it was all right. And you'll notice it was messier from behind, but I'll be scraping off the snots later. That's another term that I learnt. So that is gobbo and snots. So by the time I got to the fifth course, this is where I would key in the bricks. Notice there's a notch exposed, so I would put plenty of gobbo in there, put another brick in there, and keep carrying on. And then I had a small one at the end. The other thing that I learned was the indent of the brick, I can't remember the term of it, I've got it facing upwards. 
apparently it's debatable of which way it goes and I'd make sure plenty of mortar was in that too as I went along. And when it came to needing to trim any bricks down and because I don't have a brick cutter, I would bash the end with a hammer until it would slot in nicely. But definitely wear goggles for that because you don't want shards going into your eyes. And I'd carry on adding gobbo and mortar in between them. I did ask whether we needed some X-shaped metal pieces, as I've seen before, for bricklaying. But apparently we didn't need it because we were keying it in. But like every DIY project, you need to do your own research. Also, sometimes chipping away with a hammer can completely destroy the brick. But because we had so many, I'd just try again because there's quite a lot in this bungalow. And whenever I ran out of mortar, my dad would just go and fill up the bucket and bring it to me just to make life easier. I was concerned I'd struggle when I got to the narrow gap at the top, but I was advised just to add mortar as normal and find a slim enough piece of brick, or if I didn't find one, just chip at it and fit it in and add plenty of gobbo. I can't get used to the word gobbo. But by the time the whole thing was done, I'd scrape off any of the excess snots and then fill any gaps with mortar while I had it. I didn't want anything to be protruding by the time it's set, which would then make life harder for the plasterer later on. So what would you do differently? Feel free to comment below. You never know when tips could be useful. And if you don't want to miss out on any of the future videos on this renovation project, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you make sure you get notifications. Okay, hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.